The PNM solar facility is a 25 kilowatt solar photovoltaic system. It produces enough energy to supply the annual electricity needs of about six average New Mexico homes. The facility, built in 2006, will operate virtually maintenance-free for 20 to 25 years. The 22 arrays, each containing four solar PV panels, is visible to motorists on Interstate 25 at Algodones. The facility provides a clear environmental benefit as a generating resource. It also is intended to promote solar PV technology to the public. This is what's feeding here and then it's feeding to the system right there. If you want to walk and look at it, that's, it's been cutting sections to get it over here, but that's a wind turbine blade. It's about 120 feet long, and there's three of them on each wind turbine. The wind turbine farm is in, um, outside of Santa Rosa going towards Fort Sumner on the left. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there next week. Yeah, I haven't even been up there. I just oh, it's been that I've seen it. There's 110 windmills, there are 118 windmills, 210 feet tall. Oh, yeah, it's just cool. unbelievable. PowerPoint to show other people at your school. There's the same thing in Berlin. When you go down to Las Cruces, you've got what's called a combined cycle. And a combined cycle is you use the reheat, the steam, uh, flame, and the temperature off the external gas coming out to heat a recovery oil. And the steam that you generate generates a turbine. So it's your more efficient out of your gas burner. And you're going to see all gas burners going in probably across the United States for a long time. Okay, behind you are what we use for cooling off the steam when it comes through our turbine is the cooling towers. I mean, those, these are pretty dilapidated and would never be used again. They'd have to be totally rebuilt. But your steam goes through your boilers, goes, goes through the cycle in the turbine, drops into a condenser, which I'll show you. And the condenser has cooling water running through it, which is where it comes through from these towers back and forth to the plant. And then you reuse all your water as much as you can. So you, you do have quite a bit of makeup water on your coolant towers because of evaporation. evaporation. Um, the other plant where I work, just to give you a horrible number, probably during a full run on all three units, 2,800 gallons a minute. sort of, I don't know what they look, look little bullets. Mm -hmm. That's your boiler feed pumps, and what those do is put the pressure on the uh, boilers to get you the steam and pressure to go into your turbine. I think these are probably 600 pound boilers, which is small, where you look at a coal fired on, you get past 350 megawatts, mm -hmm. you have to go what's called supercritical steam, so you can get 3,500 pounds pressure, right, right, and then your temperatures are going to be a little over a thousand degrees. Where we generated about 975 for our, where I'm at, mm -hmm. and we've got superheated steam, which is we'll run about 1,200 pounds pressure and 975 degrees per right. hour steam. So these are going to be a, quite a bit less, 600 pounds, probably temperature, I'd say maybe close to 600, 500 degrees. 
What's the energy uh, source, the fuel for here? This was gas and gas I don't know if they ever used what's called number six grade diesel. diesel I mean, not, yeah. it's, it's called number six grade fuel. It's like tar. Yeah. But you have to heat it up right. to about 212 degrees to get it to flow enough where you can put it through your system so you can spin it out into air right. to get it to burn. Right. And then we went to diesel at the other plant, and I'm sure these tanks held diesel. Yes, yeah, was uh, cleaner. Uh, Gas cheaper is much cleaner. I mean, your fuels for a while uh, in the 70s were cheaper than running natural gas. Mm. So they make a decision on how to run by what the market said for even back way back then, how much is gasoline or diesel? But not coal. Compared to not coal. Yeah, because coal, they'd have the hole here. Coal's cheap. Yeah. Okay, what I was telling you about the cooling towers is you got these, which is your condensers, you got a bunch of tubes in them. Your steam's going to come down through your turbine and go around the tubes in here. Usually you put your cold water in at the bottom, it draws it out because you want to maintain a vacuum on your turbine, sucks the steam in, and those pumps are there as well as the pumps are back to the cooling tower. Those two on each side. Right, right. Uh, we're looking at three different units. I don't know how they're not. Yeah, the one, two, and three, I guess as we go down. You can get into a lot of units that are uh, similar in design was by company. And there was different boiler manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, yep. BMW, I'm trying to think of the other one. Stearns and Rogers, I think, had some boilers. Okay. And there's another one out there that um, had their design on boilers. So depending on what you did and who the lowest bid was, that's who put your boiler on your turbine. You might have bought 20 units from Westinghouse, but they might have different boilers on each one in oh, different plants. Oh, okay. So, Just yeah. because of, you know, the bidding process. So turbines were companies like Westinghouse? Westinghouse, the General TV. Electric were the main ones. Okay. The only other one that I remember back in those days was Alice Chalmers, which is Siemens right. Right. power. Siemens. Uh, to give you an idea of what, how the industry's changed, you've got Westinghouse, which is Siemens. Siemens has bought yeah. a bunch of They're probably the biggest power company in the uh, world right now. And then you've got General Electric, which you, you know, is really big too. Mm -hmm. Those are your two main sources. You've got some of the gas turbines. You've got some offshoots, Hitachi. Um, I think Mitsubishi makes mm -hmm. gas turbines. But your main focus is still these turbines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you've gotten dwelled into how gas and diesel and all that is, is yeah. how it's used, now it's changing. Yeah. As far as use, is because China and India, which are the most populous countries in the world, right. are becoming into, um, what is the term? Um, well, they're getting into the technology. So high tech countries. High tech countries more. And so you're become, you're developing middle classes now, where there was a separation huge right. there. Yeah. Now you've got a middle class, and those middle classes are buying cars. You're constructing equipment, so you're using a lot of diesel in all these countries now. Huge population. Right, a huge population. So the more they get in the middle class, the more gasoline and diesel they're going to use. Yeah. I mean, you've been, you don't hear it much, but I see it a little bit, is Obama and uh, this new bill that they're coming on energy mm -hmm. for clean air <clears throat> well we need to be focused on not just the United States but the, the world. companies that countries like mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. that are polluting ten times more than we are yeah. Yeah. because they aren't uh, China protecting themselves. And, and India combined open a new coal fired power plant every week right. for a month and we aren't going to cure it takes nine to twelve years to permit a coal fired power plant here right. nuclear right and so it's something to think about as you teach and embed that we need to get clean air across the world, not just here. These things here, in fact, they must have been running number six grade fuel oil. Heat the oil. Heat the oil, that's what I was talking about, 212 degrees to get it to flow enough to be able to put it in the boiler, uh, to be able to put it, what's called atomizing air on it, uh, to get it to swirl into droplets so it'll burn. Diesel. Smells good. <laughs> okay. We're inside the plant. This is where you'll have your tubes and 
steam comes from here. You have gas that came in on one hitter, and these things, if you were running oil, fuel, you'd stick these in, and they'd have air attached to them so they could spray it like I told you about. A lot of this equipment is so old. Like you see one and two written on there, that's regulating your oil going into your system. So each of these burn things is good. Those burners. are the burners. Burners are in each of them and they're stacked. Right. And the flue is up there somewhere. Yeah, the flue is up there. So I don't the know exactly the configuration on that. But these ducts that you see coming in here yeah. will be air. Okay. So you got air coming in, so that's makeup air coming from a force draft fan. I think these have what's called induced fan, draft fans. Okay. What that means is that when you're pushing it in, you're sucking it out at the same time. So you could actually come over here while this thing's burning and open the door on it and look at the flame. Yeah. At the other plant that I used to work at that was induced draft, we used to take our magazines and stuff, throw them in the boiler while they were burning. Um, but you could actually, it's, you can look in, open doors. Where I'm at, force draft, straight up, pushes the air through, push it out to the stack. Okay, looking at this, let's see if I can sh <laughs> develop and show you. Yeah. Okay, what up? This one Step here is where I work. That's the smaller plant. Okay, it sends on probably about just the plant itself on about two acres, I guess. Here's San Juan. That plant there sent, sets on about, I'd probably say 60 to 80 acres, just the plant. I mean, it's deceptive because you got pictures, but that's how big that is. Here, here's this plant, and this should be similar in size. I mean, it generates a lot more, but that's your nuclear over at Palo Verde in Arizona. Um, you saw the wind turbine blades, they look small looking at them from here on that. I don't know what other questions you got. Anybody have any? Questions? Now's the time to answer. So what was the lifespan of this? Probably about 40 years before they shut it down. What happened on a lot of these small plants like this is uh, the plant had a life expectancy of 30 years um, upon original build. And in the early 80s, the company started shutting down the plants that were in their 30 year cycle and either building new or just shutting them down. And Reef Station, now, because we, the, the philosophy changed. Oh, we can run these long, we just gotta do maintenance. This one here, I think was, uh, the last unit was commissioned in 1959. Mm. So we're almost 50 years over here that we're running. And we plan on redoing $23 million worth of work on that 
next year. We've already started spending some of it and expect it to last another 10 to 15 years before we have to go to it again. Uh, as the city grows, where do you think, uh, what do you think is going to happen as far as what comes next? What comes next is yeah. you're going to, I think you're going to see, um, not reef station, it will always be a peaking plant. You're going to see simple cycle gas turbines with uh, Ersic boilers, heat recovery boilers put in. Like at Person Station, I can see them turning that one into a combined cycle, possibly the one in Berlin into a combined cycle. Like I said, we've already built the one in Las Cruces that's a combined cycle. Plus, you've got the one in Deming, which is owned by Tucson, uh, Phelps Dodge, and PM, which is a uh, big combined cycle. I think it generates about 600 megawatts. So as it grows, you're going to see that happen. And then eventually, depending on things go, you're going to see nuclear come in into this country being built again. I mean, I don't know who remembers, probably several of you, but it was Three Mile Island basically shut down uh, the nuclear industry back then. And the fear factor, I mean, if, if we wouldn't have the fear factor, we wouldn't be on power be probably much closer to have cleaner air than you ever were because of that. So. Okay, behind us over here is our turbines. Okay, the steam that these generate here will come in here. There's valves that open them up. I don't know if there's a picture. Of, I don't think she has a picture. Yeah, she does. We'll look at her. Anyway, the steam comes through through stages. Your first stage blades are usually about one inch because that's your highest pressure and highest temperature. As you lose your pressure and lose your temperature, you get all the way to the back, the blades grow incrementally for surface area, and it, then the steam goes down and goes into condenser. The way they turn is what's called reaction blading. They're all set at a pitch, so when the steam hit, it pushes and then it reacts off a of stationary and then it hits another one that's turning until it's all gone at the end and then you bring it in. Then your water is taken through that and you recycle it in your boiler again. So you use, you have makeup, but you recycle it continuously. I mean, this water that's used here is expen what we call expensive water because you have to keep it really clean. So you want to keep as much oxygen out of it, uh, silica, anything that's in it. So it's actually filtered somewhere in here? Well, this had, we passed it. Okay. But it had a place down there that would have filter, filtered it. Um, at wells or? Yeah, these are on wells, but your water that comes and you have storage tanks to store your clean water. Okay. Over at, uh, we use ion systems over at Reeves oh. for uh, cleaning up our water over there. Yeah. So, okay, if you want to look, it looks like they've got a picture of the turbine over there. I could probably tell you every part on this one because this is. <laughs> the 44 megawatt unit at Reeve Station. So you use a control piston here. You've got a valve rack here. You've got an inlet set of valves here. What happens when you initially start is you bring your inlet steam in here and these valves open all the way up. As soon as you get to a pre-designated, which is about 3,450 RPM, your governor takes over. And that's all on hydraulics. When the governor takes over, it closes these valves back and keeps it at that speed. And so you bring it up uh, with an electric motor on the front and sitting right here. You open up a little bit and you get to 3,600 RPM. At 3,600 RPM, you're at that 60 hertz is where all your clocks and everything are. If you aren't there, then your clocks don't work right, everything's screwed. And we did that to Las Vegas, New Mexico one. <laughs> on, our gas, on our gas turbine over there, we had a situation where we had an emergency, and you went into the grid, and we were like at, uh, I think we were at 57, and so all the clocks slowed down by 10 or 15 minutes over time. <laughs> all of them, because there's no choice, but that's what will happen if you don't ever see. I think the European countries are at 50, so your, your speed's probably around 3,200 RPM, if I remember correctly. But your steam comes through, and there, the small blades I was talking about are right here. This part of your turbine is a dummy part with seals, and that's just to keep it in the center. It balances the steam flow. 
So this stays here and doesn't push one way or the other. It uses steam to help with that, plus a bearing on the front. So it comes through and you get through these stages, which is called, these, right about this far is your high pressure. And then it breaks on from here and you call that intermediate pressure. You're getting it to um, probably about 300 pounds, um, 300 degrees, somewhere in there. And these have what's called crossover. And it goes through, the steam continues to go through here with the help of a vacuum. It starts at your smaller blades here and continues to tur turn it until it hits the outside here, goes back down and turns into water. Over on the other end is your generator. The generators use a magnetic field, which this, we don't use these anymore. Exciters, which would create a magnetic field through voltage on here. And the, the more magnetism you get to push out the power, the more this would have to push on this end to generate. So these little boxes on here and these tubes you see inside here, we use hydrogen. Does anybody know how dangerous hydrogen is? That what cools all our generators. Oh. So, but it's the most efficient, the best gas that we can use for that. No other gas has been helium. bounced to helium. this day. Hmm? Helium. helium doesn't work. It has to be hydrogen. Hmm. And so we use hydrogen gas inside this generator to do it. These keep them cool. Um, you know, then we have leak detection systems, stuff like that. One year when I was working at Reeves, we were, the, we used, we don't use the clean water in these, we use the bad water. So those get scaled up and we were riding them out online, popped a tube. Everybody ran pretty far hmm. until it drained out. So we tripped the unit. I don't know, here, this thing here might give you more, and I haven't even, like I said, I haven't done it, but this talks about the solar grid out there. You have to read it. Say how much output does it? No. Takes a picture. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> well, the solar doesn't use all the generators and turbines and all that. What, what's that? The solar panels don't have to turn a turbine. To no. The, no. The outputs of hold on. The output is built in and they just, it goes down and usually you push them into a battery bank like this one over here. That one has store. information about the... Does it? That's it. Tim KW, which is about 10 megawatts up to 500 KW. Yeah, that would be a huge system. I think this one, if I remember correctly, is about... 30,000 kW, or no, 30 kW on this one. Anybody understand what biomass is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they may still be going to build, build one here. I don't know. We were going to, but it was not cost effective. So the, the biomass got shut down last year. Um, and then this just gives a grid of how, the, how you get into transmission bump it down with a transformer uh, to the power needed for uh, for your 110 or 240 volt, bumps it into distribution lines and then sent to the customer. I don't know, you've been around the, did you go to, down as far as Portalis in that area? No, no. We've got uh, the big transmission that goes into Texas that we put in there yeah. on the single standing poles. They have one base on them that's about, well, it's pretty good size, but it, the structure just sits on that. And the guy wires tie it off. So that'll, that's a 300, 345 KV line. Right, right. Going into Texas from. Uh, and there's plans for a new line coming there. To start also. them, yeah, because we need more transmission. Yeah. Whether well, you're using solar or nuclear or the transmission lines, Electricity, electricity. I mean, I don't know if your books show it in it, but you've got AC and DC. The biggest difference is DC, if you look at it on a chart, go like this, right? AC alternates. And that's how they can send it. Because it alternates, that's how they're able to send it far distances. 
DC can't be said very long. Um, but um, I don't know if anybody ever watches, which I do all the time. DIY has uh, has one of those dead man ladders. Mm. Have you ever seen that on no. there? Mm. Yeah, they've got a show deconstruction. They talk about electricity. And they actually a dead man ladder. They hook up one tent to it, and it's got some wires running up it, and it arcs across mm. to show AC. And they'll actually stick a, a piece of paper in it and show you that it jumps as it goes up. It'll burn the paper as it goes up the rail. And then, they, then they'll show you how dangerous it is by taking a hot dog and taking it on a screwdriver and putting it in there and how it almost explodes it right there. But it's, that's, they do a very good job of that. Yes? What was the main factor contributing to the uh, uh, cost of it? What was the main factor in shutting The output of what it, it would only going to produce like 32 megawatts. And then getting the source of the fuel, we're going to have to pay for that, which is, it was, they were going to use just, ask, uh, I think, sawdust type stuff from the plants. Right, right. It wasn't even right. going to be one of the trash burners. Wood mills. That's all it was going to use. So it came down to that they couldn't produce what it would cost to put it in to go into biomass. So my old boss was working on that project, and he was like, thank goodness it's, they decided not to do it because he could see it, that it wasn't going to go. They have no plans that I know of right now, P&M, and their structure to build another plant right now. They're going to revitalize Reeves, and then I could see in the next, well, maybe five years, they'd look at uh, Pa Rido Mesa mm -hmm. out there on the west side. Right, 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 right. Where they found all the bodies. Right. In that area, putting a, a combined cycle facility out there. They were right on, we thought it was going to be done, but they were when we, our stocks dropped and everything went, uh, all our projects got shut down. And we were supposed to be spending that 23 million this year and we're having to wait until next year to spend it. Anything else? Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. I mean, you got some places to go on that stuff. Yeah. This important stop is many of the folks are from here. And everybody passes this on the highway going back and forth. Oh, yeah. And I've been passing it for 30 years. And now you see our two so. plants. Uh, when you go by, uh, if you head it back to Socorro, yeah. look over on your right when you get to Paseo. Right. That's Reeves. That's where I work. Then you go down to where you hit Rio Bravo, and that's called Delta Generating Station. Now right. I call it Person Station. Mm -hmm. What you'll see on the big building is the old plant. That's where T4 was filmed. The small part that has a retaining wall in front of the sound is the gas turbine that's in there. And to show you how you don't generate, that one runs 1% a year. 1%? Huh. Yeah, because it's so expensive right. to run out gas. Yeah. You don't get the, uh, the money out of it. And our purchase power agreement with who it is is badly written. So and I think it's been there almost 10 years, and we don't run it. So, I haven't even asked Chuck about that. I'll have to ask him if he's ever gotten to a billing cycle where it paid for his whole bill. That would be interesting to see. There's a video called Electricity for the Future. And in that video, there's a woman in England who shingled her house with the small ones. And she generated so much that she was so I know, and that's what that that's one of the things that she talked about was in I wish the I had few months <laughs> in the few months that why the sun did so shine, she she made enough money to it pay for be, her electricity but that it didn't generate. Part of the problem with the technology time. is like so. she's talking about <laughs> is that's getting awesome. better and better and better with it. So a panel that would be the size of this like room ten years ago now is a panel like that. Yeah. So the technology's gotten in what you're talking about, you're getting these small where you can put it as work panels. It's just getting more, and there's there's micro um, turbines and stuff coming out, and generators that are being developed. And you, yeah. I've heard they get into the 40 megawatts now, yeah. but it's just getting to produce and getting input. We may start getting into that even at the plant because we have such big acreage where we start putting in the micro turbines and stuff on our plant instead of going with the traditional steam. 
I mean, it's just something that we've talked about. It's just to see if it takes off. But it's just expensive technology. It's just like me and my computer business, right? Because I love, I like building computers. I can buy a processor that was developed a year ago for about a third of the cost that it cost when it came out. So I just bought a high-end i7 chip that cost me $350. The chip I bought a year ago for uh, E8400, which was basically state-of-the-art, was about $150, well, it was $300 something then, now it's about $150 in a year. So over time, the prices are gonna come down? Yeah, and, and I, I think you'll see eventually um, in the future where the technology will get, we're starting in the computer, where you can only get so good that when they get, you can only get so good that it stops there and it's very slow growth pattern and now they want to market it and so your prices will drop. So you have people that are building, there's a plant being built here in town I think in Albuquerque that's mm -hmm. going to be doing solar, doing the panels. Mm -hmm. So There's already the admin. Right. South Valley, they're building oh, they another one. Right. Huh. And they, so. they screen print, use ink to make the panels so that they're not doing it with the crystals and stuff. So right. It's a lot cheaper. It's going to start going down. And are people putting wind turbines around in around Eric, Albuquerque, or nobody's doing that? No. I mean, think of the size. Uh, they're huge. Yeah. They're huge. Not great. just these. These are big. But if you look at one for your yard, it's going to stick up in the air about 100, yeah, maybe not that much, about 60 feet. And then these blades on it, and then it's maintaining it, especially if you're dependent on it. There's a lot to it. You see some, I haven't seen any long, but I, I, I have seen like on farms and stuff, where they brought one in to generate their uh, electricity, do their wells and stuff like that. So, but you still usually have backup, but they do use that just strictly. But if they fail, Expensive to get fixed. I was going to say, and those prices are about the same as the solar panel. I mean, they're expensive. They're expensive. Oh, yeah. If you look at that blade out there, huge. Huge. But you need to anchor them in the tons of concrete. Concrete. Yeah, concrete how do you do that? Holy cow. Oh, you'll see it. The enormous. The weird thing about it is the amount of carbon dioxide that's produced by manufacturing the concrete. Yeah. Is a real negative in this whole process. Yeah, that's why nothing's free. No, nothing's all. for free. That's why I was telling you about that company. Uh, yeah, their right, right. their system for developing this new concrete. It doesn't it doesn't generate near the pollution. Mm -hmm. right. It'll last a hundred years. It's lightweight. It's a place called Aircrete that wanted to build on this site. Oh. And so I don't know where they'll end up going. <laughs> their other place was Mesa del Sol, and. I think up in Colorado. They wanted to start a concrete. Company? They're out of Germany. They have like 20 some plants in Germany. And they wanted to do it here, but it yeah, didn't a guy called me. He wanted to build it right over there. What's and it called? Aircrete. Aircrete. Crete. 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 But it didn't happen. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know what's happening with oh, okay. it. Um, I just I handed it off. Oh, okay. People get my number, and so I have to figure out who can I help found them. You, so yeah. Yeah. How, yes, how, Dr. Wilbur found you too. How they can, I can help them, and so I got him with our development people. And so are they still talking? I have we no idea. Know. But they wanted here, dual purpose. Right next to the freeway, great advertisement. Yeah. Have their signs and can show, you right. know, what's being emitted. Plus the sand's right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how far are they bringing the limestone? They're Lots of sand and gravel quarries up and down I 25. This is company called Ideal. Like they build, they build uh, those. Like stuff. Yeah, that's what mining those for years. Light weight and you build these your house. Like, thank you so much. Okay, take care. Thanks.